All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce um, Prime for Success Technical Assistance Workshop with our partners at Jackson Health. Uh, we are going to get started in a few moments. I uh, want to welcome all of our attendees that are here today. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see everyone. Uh, if you are on Facebook, um, you can share this presentation to your page um, and let everyone know that we are going live with a very informative presentation. Oh, there we go. I got some light on me now. This is a part of a technical assistance series we've been doing with Jackson Health for a number of years on um, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce and Jackson Health our technical assistance workshops. Um, if you want more information, you can always go to www.m-dcc.org um, slash events and also look at previous webinar recordings. Um, Jackson Health has been an amazing partner in helping our businesses um, learn more about government contracting and preparing themselves to take advantage of bids. Um, and today's webinar about understanding the government bid is going to be very informative with some business owners who had experience working through the government process. So join us. Uh, we're going to get started in just a few moments, at exactly 10.05 in five minutes. So for those that are here on Zoom, you can put in the chat, say hey, say good morning, introduce your business uh, so that our panelists that are on at the moment can get an understanding idea of who's in the building, or uh, actually not in the building, but who's on the webinar um, and in this space, uh, so that we can be a little more specific um, with our questions. And if you have initial questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box and we will get started in just a few moments. We are live on Facebook, so feel free to share. All right, I'm seeing in the attendees, we got some partners from the county on the Miami-Dade um, NBDA Center on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure y'all put your information in the chat. Um, there are some additional partners um, that help businesses throughout Miami-Dade County um, in getting technical assistance, um, in government contracting, business planning, marketing. Uh, we're happy to see that they have joined us um, today as a part of this technical assistance workshop. And we will get started in one minute. So spread the word. All right. So welcome everyone to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce and Jackson Health Technical Assistance Workshop called Prime for Success, Understanding the Government Bid. Uh, we wanna welcome everyone to be a part of this um, event and this fruitful conversation. I'd like to first start off by discussing a few house rules. Uh, we are here on Zoom and you will have the ability to ask questions. So if you put your questions in the Q&A box um, and that will be a primary source to ask questions. If we have time, we may be able to bring people on if you raise your hand, but the Q&A box is the first and foremost place um, to ask questions. You may provide comments to anything the panelists are saying or any experiences you have by entering into the chat, um, but make sure you put everything in the Q&A box um, so that we can moderate the questions um, and be able to give you the answers that you need right now. 
Um, this is a part of the technical assistance series with the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce that we do um, at least once a month throughout the year on various topics. And with that, I want to first uh, bring up our president, uh, Eric Knowles, president of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, to welcome everyone. Mr. Knowles. How is everybody doing this morning? Uh, love and life. Okay. Well, good morning. Thank you, Matt, for um, coordinating and making sure that we're staying in the front of uh, these business opportunities. I want to thank um, the president of Jackson Health Systems, Carlos Magoya, and my, our good friend, Matt Penzer, for all that they do for the chamber. And this can't be done without Amber Lohorn, who continues to ensure that our businesses are in front of the opportunities that are presented. So please take advantage, uh, take notes, learn as much as you can learn, ask the questions that you um, would like to ask. Uh, and uh, look, I look forward and I'm sure everyone looks forward to a great uh, seminar this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And I would like to bring on our Stella partner who's been a resource to our business owners um, and from Miami-Dade County to everyone that ever sent to Jackson Health, Amber has been there to assist them through the process and through many years um, as a small business um, program director and um, been an amazing partner with the Chamber. So Amber, would love for you to come on in and, and start to welcome everyone to today's a topic. Good morning and thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, Eric. Uh, it's such a pleasure to again partner with the Chamber and bring in helpful information to small and minority businesses here in Miami-Dade County. Uh, my name is Amber Lawhorn. I'm the Director of Supplier Diversity and Small Business Enterprise for Jackson Health System. We are the provider of healthcare services to the citizens of Miami-Dade County and we're committed to working with small businesses here in our local community. Um, so with that said, we are uh, on an annual basis partnering with the chamber to bring valuable information to its membership. Um, I'm always asking that, what are your members asking for? What kind of information are they looking for? And uh, most recently, you know, the discussion was around government contracting. The process can be intimidating. Um, some find it even confusing. So we found this as an opportunity to discuss government contracting, um, not just for Jackson. Jackson is an agency of Miami-Dade County government. So our purchasing practices are similar to the county, uh, but not just for Jackson or for Miami-Dade County, but any vendors that are interested in contracting with government agencies um, on our block where we exist, you know, we have the VA next to us. Um, there's Miami-Dade County Public Schools a half a mile away from our facility. So um, there is an, a very large pool of opportunity for local small businesses, and we don't want anyone walking away from these opportunities because they don't understand um, the process, the documentation, so this is, you know, part one of a two-part series. The next uh, part two is going to be about preparing a winning bid. So we hope you'll tune in for that. Um, and I hope uh, Matt remembers the date for the, the second part because I don't at the moment. <laughs> yes, uh, that date is July, what is it? Um, 13th, <laughs> Tuesday, July 13th at 10 a.m. Okay, perfect. <laughs> but so you can we go on our website to find out more. <laughs> Great. We, we, we hope that you will also tune in for that event. So these are very condensed discussions. You know, we're going to try to cover a lot in a short amount of time. Um, so we won't get through each and every detail today, but at least you'll know who is available to assist you with this information going forward. If that's all you walk away with, then we've achieved our goal today. So we appreciate that. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists for today's discussion. We have Michelle Romano. She's the Senior Director of Procurement Services for Jackson Health System. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah. it, it is a pleasure to be here with you and speaking with you this morning. I look forward to our webinar. 
Great. We are so happy to have you. And if you would just tell us a little bit about your role and what your team does for Jackson. Sure. So like Amber said, I am the Senior Director of Procurement Over Goods and Services. Um, our department is a centralized procurement department. So we purchase um, all of the goods or services for the entire health system uh, from the day-to-day from the day-to-day uh, purchases to the large-scale um, contracts and service agreements. Great, thank you so much. Okay, next we have Margaret Anglin with Mr. Wyman Electric. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I am Margaret Anglin with Mr. Wyman Electric. We are electrical contractors here in the South Florida area. And um, we are in pursuit of several government contracts and we have won several. Uh, currently, my big, uh, my big win was the Broward County Convention Center uh, here in Broward. And also um, in Miami-Dade, my other big win was uh, Grove Central. And that's a multi-use uh, facility. So uh, those are my I mean, we have several, but those are my two, uh, what you call gold mines right now. Yes, great, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next we have Ronald Johnson with Paragon Advisors Partners. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Amber. Um, so kind of similar to Margaret, we have a, quite a few running, but the one exciting one that we're kind of working on now is uh, one in the disaster recovery round related to cases. Uh, and we're working with actually a large team of uh, different primes to actually uh, put it together. And so it's actually been, it's a really exciting time actually. Great, thank you for sharing. And lastly, we have Benjamin Essien with EBS Engineering. Ben? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning panelists and uh, MCDC for putting together this uh, presentation or this discussion group. Yes, uh, I'm the president of EBS Engineering. We have been in business for over 26 years now. And uh, we do have a contract currently with uh, Jackson, which we have been working since 2017. So yes, uh, we've been around and we also have a contract with uh, Broward County as a sub. We have a contract various contract with Miami, Dade County right now as sub you know, to them anywhere to uh, other bigger companies anywhere. But uh, Jackson gave us the opportunity to be the prime on this contract. So that was very exciting for us and we continue to work with Jackson and we hope that we will continue to expand on the relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben, and thank you to the panelists for sharing your expertise um, and your experience because we want our attendees to know that these are people that are experienced with the process, um, they lead processes. So we don't want you to feel that, you know, you're not getting the information from the right source. These are the people that you wanna hear from and we're very excited that they're here to share this information with you today. So with that said, we're gonna get right into the presentation and we are going to um, start with Michelle. She's gonna share information about a government bid from her perspective of leading a procurement team and uh, many thousands of procurement processes in her time at Jackson, I would imagine. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Amber. Um, so let's start off with what is a bid and what are the different types of government bids? So um, as you know, whenever a government is seeking a service, a good, a, a project, um, we go ahead and um, issue requests or invitations to submit a bid, a proposal, or a quote. Um, requests, and, and I'll talk to you a little bit about those three um, different types of processes, although there's others that governmental entities use, but these are the main ones. Uh, typically, requests for quotes are done for smaller scale uh, projects or procurements when you know exactly what you're seeking for. So a request for quote is something that is awarded based on lowest price. An invitation to bid is very similar to a request for quote, except that it's done usually when the dollars um, are a more formal process. Uh, at Jackson Health System, our formal, our formal threshold starts at $250,000. Uh, 
um, and everything under that is an informal process. Um, an invitation to bid, like I said, is like a request for quotes in that it is awarded based on a lowest priced firm. A request for proposals is a little bit different. Uh, it's not awarded solely based on price. Uh, the document will have a different criteria in which uh, a selection committee will evaluate and a, an RFP is actually awarded based on the highest um, value um, proposal. Uh, it has many different aspects that we look at, such as technical qualifications, uh, local NSB preferences, um, along with price. Uh, another difference between a request for pro proposal and an invitation to bid in an RFQ is that in a request for proposal, there's that opportunity to negotiate the contract terms and um, even the scope of work, as long as the scope of work is still in line with the services that we're seeking as part of that RFP. Um, when we're doing an RFP, we typically, we know exactly, we know what we're looking for, but we want those proposals to come in and tell us what the best way to get, to, to get what we're looking for is. Um, and throughout this, throughout the presentation, we will be using bid interchangeably uh, as a government solicitation. Um, so we can go to the next slide. One moment. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. Uh, as, we, as we go to the next slide, I'll talk to you a little bit also about responsive and responsibleness. It is important that we every award will be awarded to a responsive bidder, which is a bidder that conforms in all respects to the solicitation. Um, and the bidder also has to be responsible. And a responsible bidder is that one is a bidder that has the capability in all respects to perform the requirements fully and the integrity and reliability, which will assure that they perform appropriately. Um, so that's also very important to know as part of um, the process when you're, when you're um, submitting a bid. Um, something that's very in line with Miami-Dade County and Jackson is the cone of silence. Um, so once a bid hits the street, um, any type of solicitation, uh, the cone of silence takes effect uh, specifically for formal, for formal processes. And the cone of silence is really there to protect the integrity of the process to make sure that it is a transparent and fair process. So once the cone of silence takes effect, it really restricts communications between the vendor community and the governmental entity. Um, and that really is to make sure that it is a transparent process. All communication must be done in writing and it must be done directly with that procurement agent who's uh, chairing that solicitation. The only um, communication that is not done in writing is you can go ahead and pick up the phone and call that procurement agent and discuss matters of process. So um, in the slide in front of you, you're gonna see um, a sample request for quote. Uh, this is the first page of our, of our RFQs. And I wanna just highlight some important things that I think are um, key to, to being successful, right? So each uh, RFQ title page is gonna have the solicitation type. So that'll tell you if we're seeking quotes, we're seeking bids, or if we're seeking proposals. Um, it'll have the type and the solicitation number. It's very important to make sure that um, when responding um, to, to a solicitation that you have, that you're responding to the appropriate solicitation. It also has the procurement agent. This is key to your success because this is the person that you will be contacting and having that regular communication throughout the process. Don't be scared um, to pick up the phone if you, have every, if you ever have an issue or have a question relating to process to reach out to your procurement agent. Very key is the deadline. All of our solicitations have a specific due date and due date and time. It is very important that proposals, bids, quotes are submitted before that due date and time. Um, we do not, from a public health trust, and I know that many other organizations do not accept late bids or proposals. So it's very um, important that you, you have that date, you know, sketched in your, in your memory. And then 
It's also how to respond. That's really important because especially in today's day and age uh, after COVID, I know a lot of organizations like ourselves are using electronic uh, procurement systems in which we no longer allow mail-in or uh, physical proposals. Um, so it's very important that you review the solicitation and understand the method of responding to such. And then I'll, now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit um, in general about the bid details. So every solicitation is gonna have a scope of service. What is it that we're seeking? What are the prospective deliverables? Um, every, also, aside from that, it's gonna have your response requirements. What are the requirements to meet? What are the requirements that you need to meet? How can I be a responsive bidder? It's going to outline the general requirements. Um, it's going to outline the social and economic program requirements, such as SBE preferences, local preferences, veteran preferences. Um, if there are any living or responsible wages tied to that solicitation. It's also going to outline as an entity of Miami-Dade County, um, Jackson Health Trust and Miami-Dade County have certain applicable fees that other governmental entities may not have, or they may have separate ones, such as the Office of Inspector General and the user access fees. All of our contracts, all of our solicitations uh, will have these fees outlined in them. The Office of, of Inspector General fee is, is a quarter of 1%. And the user access program fee is 2%. And these are fees that are requirements pursuant to um, Miami-Dade County ordinance. And then it'll also have, like I said, your submission instructions. This is, is really key to, to being able to provide a responsive um, bid or proposal. It's please review the, the submission requirements to the team because especially in today's day and age that everything is, like I said, entered into the system. Unfortunately, we've had to um, tell firms that we already do business with, I'm sorry, you did not submit your proposal on time. Um, we cannot move forward <laughs> with, with your proposal because we didn't receive it be before the bid due date. And that's, sometimes I find that vendors don't take the time to really go into the system and, and learn it and, and play with it. And if I, I cannot stress enough the importance, please do not wait half an hour to 20 minutes before that deadline uh, to start um, su submitting your bidder proposal because we, we will not accept late bids and the system will just cut you off at that due date and time. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so all of all Solicitations will have uh, the corresponding terms and conditions that will that will be uh, the basis for award and the contractual terms and conditions that um, that you will have to abide by if you are the successful bidder. Um, key key terms and conditions are the term of the resulting contract. Is it going to be for one year? Is it going to be for three years? Five years? Is it going to have any renewal options? Um, termination is also a key uh, term and condition. Um, as a county entity, uh, and we always have a termination without cause provision in all of our contracts, that is a requirement. We also have a termination for breach in our contracts. Um, all of the applicable laws and affidavits that, um, that will apply to the contract, um, such as you know, conflict of interest, there's any living wage requirements, those will all be outlined as part of those terms and conditions. The pricing and payment terms, um, Jackson Health System does have standard 45 day payment terms pursuant to Miami-Dade County ordinance. Um, when we are contracting with an SBE, our payment terms are 14 days. Um, the terms and conditions also include insurance requirements, confidentiality requirements, um, indemnification, um, things that will outline really those terms of the resulting agreement. The bid also always requests for qualifications. Um, are there any specific licensures that are needed? Are there any certifications that are a requirement in performing the work? Um, we also ask for uh, past experience 
let us know what experience you have in providing this good, what experience you have in providing this service. Um, what are your references? Can you share your references with us so that we can, you know, communicate with those with those firms that you have been have done, you know, wonderful experience with. Another part of the bid or proposal that's very key is the quote submittal form, the bid submittal form, or the pricing section if it's um, an RFP. It is it is key that you follow the instructions that are outlined as part of those forms. Um, please always make sure that you go ahead and execute those forms because that signature on the end of the form is really what is binding your quote, binding your bid. We have, you know, worked with our county attorney's office and unfortunately have had, had to deem some proposals or bids non-responsive because a, a simple failure of not signing off on that um, bid quotation form. So it's really important that you follow the the instructions as outlined in that form that you provide your pricing exactly how it is requested as part of that form because that's really what in, in a bid or in an RFQ that's really is the pricing is what allows us to tally and to determine at the end of the day who that lowest um, priced firm is to move forward with award and we need to make sure that we're doing an apples to apples comparison for that and then all bids, all solicitations um, can have can be changed and or updated or changed, updated, and that is always done as part of an amendment to that solicitation. So if there's ever going to be a change in the due date and time, that will be done as part of an amendment. If there's any questions uh, requested as part of that solicitation, we always like to post those questions and answers as part of the amendment. Uh, so that everyone has access to those questions. If the scope has to change for any reason, minimally, we will do that as part of an amendment. So it's very important. And that's why as part of um, our solicitations, we always include an acknowledgement of amendments form because we wanna make sure that you've received not only the solicitation, but all of the amendments that go along with it. Um, as part of our solicitations, we always have what's called a, a cover page, a bidder or respondent's cover page, and that really just outlines all of the information for that bidder. Who is going to be the primary point of contact um, if we have any questions or concerns? Um, you know, just your contact information. What type of, you know, corporation are you? Things, things of that nature. And then some strategies for success. Okay. So one thing is, yes, do not be intimidated by the document or the requirements. I know that government bids can be overwhelming sometimes. Um, but as a government, we have certain rules and requirements that we have to make sure that that is outlined up front so that our, our vendor community um, knows exactly what are the, those requirements are, but do not be intimidated um, and really take the time to invest up front, invest in the document, review that document from start to finish, because that will really allow you to be success, successful when you submit that bid. Mo all of our bids have a question and answer session. Don't be scared to ask the questions. If, if you have any questions on the scope. If you have any questions on process, don't be scared to ask those questions because that because if you have a question, I'm sure that there's many others that probably have the same question. So it's it's very important that you ask all the questions that you need so that if anything needs to be tweaked, we can tweak it before that due date and time so that it's so that the bid and the scope really meets everyone's needs and everyone can properly and successfully submit a bid. All of our formal bids and some informal bids as well have a pre-bid or a pre-proposal conference. Although they're not mandatory, this is a great way to ensure that you will be successful um, in submitting a bid. Why? Because as part of that pre-bid and pre-proposal conference, it's really that meet and greet, unfortunately, in today's <laughs> age after COVID, it, we're doing everything um, via webinar uh, such as this, but it's really that chance for you to understand the bid, understand the process. The procurement agent usually goes um, 
high level from top to bottom, all of the requirements of that specific bid. Um, it's also a chance for you to meet the project manager who will talk a little bit about the scope of services that we're seeking as part of that bid. It's also um, a meeting that will allow you to ask any questions you have and have that open conversation. And even sometimes as a result of those uh, open conversations and meetings, it might give us a little bit of insight as to, hey, wait, this isn't included. Maybe we need to include this. And that's why we'll, we can update um, in the form of an amendment anything that's needed. Um, so it's very important that you attend these pre-bid meetings. Although not mandatory, it, it really will help you in um, being able to provide a response. Um, and then yes, identify the forms that need to be filled out and how. Um, again, there are specific forms that are needed as part of all of solicitations. For example, at Jackson, we have a small business enterprise form, a local preference form. If, if you are going to um, claim SBE or local preference, it's important and imperative that those forms are completed appropriately and accurately. Conform, confirm the method of submission. Every, every solicitation document has a specific section that outlines how you need to submit a bid, how you need to submit that, that proposal. Please review it thoroughly. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and submit them. Reach out to the procurement agent um, and make sure that you submit it appropriately. Um, and then I think another thing that's really key and imperative is really to understand your customer, right? Research the organization know a little bit about what, what they're about and how they do business. Um, and at the end of the day, just like I've said throughout this uh, webinar, don't be intimidated by the document. Just read it. It's a lot of information, but if you take the time to invest and review the document along and all of the information up front, it will really, really um, help you in submitting um, a responsive bid. And very and briefly, that, very briefly, uh, we'll discuss. So earlier, Michelle mentioned socioeconomic program requirements in government bids. Most government agencies do have some form of a socioeconomic program in place, whether it's small business enterprise, minority business enterprise, veteran business enterprise. It really depends on the organization that you're working with. For Jackson and the county, um, there are a number of programs, the small business program, the local business, uh, locally headquartered, veteran preference. So you need to familiarize yourself with these programs through the bid document. Uh, specific to my team, we work with the small business program, uh, the county's program. So this is some information related to that program. Several of uh, the vendors that are panelists today are small businesses certified through Miami-Dade County's Small Business Development Division. Um, so I'm gonna ask our Small Business Program Specialist, Miranda is on. I'm gonna ask her to please put this, um, the uh, BMWS link in the chat. So that's the county's business uh, management workforce system. And that is the avenue that you can utilize to apply for small business enterprise certification through the county. Once you're certified SBE, there are certain uh, advantages that are in place, including Michelle mentioned 14 day payment terms. Um, you can also take advantage of measures that are applied to contracts, including setting aside an opportunity just for certified SBEs. So again, this is specific to Jackson and the county, uh, but or other organizations such as Miami-Dade County Public Schools, um, like I mentioned earlier, the VA, there are several government agencies that have these types of programs in place. Um, that information is available on their websites, but definitely as a part of their bid documentation, you will see information about those programs, uh, familiarize yourself with them so that you can pursue the appropriate certifications um, that they require. And Michelle, if you want to touch sure. on Supply Portal. Yes, so definitely. So Jackson Health System does use an online supplier portal. Um, this will allow, this is a really, it's a free and quick profile setup. It literally can take five to 10 minutes. 
And this will really allow you to receive notifications of upcoming procurement opportunities uh, specific to the commodity codes that you choose when you're signing up. It'll allow you to view all of the solicitation documents. And this is really the only, um, the only source that we have to submit a bid response. Um, so like I said, it's free registration, it's quick. And I really encourage you know, everyone listening in here to please just take some time to do it. Um, that way you will be able to receive notifications of, of all of our bid opportunities and, and appropriately respond. Thank you, Michelle. And now we're going to move into our panelist discussion. I know there's some questions in the chat. We'll take all questions towards the end. And if you would, I know it's an, it's an extra step, but if you could place your questions in the Q&A box, at the bottom of the screen, there is an option that says Q&A. If you submit your question uh, through the Q&A box, we'll be able to see it a little easier um, and make sure that we address all questions that are asked. So with that said, I'm, I'm going to ask our panelists to um, go ahead and take yourselves off mute and show your video. And we can um, start with some questions that our attendees will definitely find helpful. So the first question is from your experience, what is the most confusing or intimidating part of a government bid document? Um, and because it's so, you know, you, you found it confusing or intimidating, what resources did you tap into to get a better understanding? So we'll start with uh, Margaret. Okay, so for me, first and foremost, the word government is always scary. Um, to, because you, as a small business, you consider this, uh, this giant that how do I tap into this market? So when I first looked at a, a government bid, it, the language was not friendly. It, I, and I understand what Michelle talked about that, you know, the entities have to protect themselves, but as small business, um, your first look at the at the documents were intimidating, the size of the documents, the amount of paper gathering, um, those sort of stuff was very intimidating for me. So um, what did I do to overcome it? I seeked help. I went to PTAC, I went to Florida Women's Business Center, the chambers, the small business uh, centers in, in, in the different uh, counties as to, uh, and they all give workshops so you know knowledge is power so you always want to reach out for uh, stuff that you don't understand stuff that scares you and not be intimidated to say i don't get it what does for me i will bug you what does line one say and what do i put on that line <laughs> that's how i overcame my intimidation as far as um working on a, a government bid. Thank you so much. And you mentioned PTAC. That's new to me. If you would expound on what that organization is. So it's it's uh, under the, the SBA. And the, they, the one that I'm very familiar with is the one that is run through FAU. I know that the SBDC is run under FIU. So one is in Broward, one is in, um, in Dade. Um, but those are all entities that PTAC especially deals with understanding government contract. Okay. So see, we, I wanted to make sure to get information on that. Like I said, it was new to me, but it sounded like something helpful. And it's important that our attendees know that there are several resources. She mentioned even starting with the chamber. The chamber does offer technical assistance. And if you reach out to one organization and they can't give you the help that you need, there are others that they can likely connect you to. So that is a really important point. Thank you, Margaret. And Ronald, um, what was most intimidating or confusing for you in terms of doing uh, reviewing these bid documents and how did you overcome that? So I would say the most intimidating piece is just like you, like most people say, it's the sheer size of the volume of information that you want to make sure that you're answering everything appropriately and correctly. Um, using a lot, our team, we, we, we accomplish it a lot, but I would say where it really becomes intimidating is when it's a short turnaround. And I know a lot of small businesses are going to speak to this. They'll see a bid out in two weeks or three weeks turn around and it's like, okay, 
can I do it? I think I can, like, what do I do? And so what we did was also working with PTAC. So um, shout out to PTAC. The, uh, what we do a lot is, is get, we work with questions. And so some of those questions that we actually ask ourselves is like, okay, do our understanding of the customer's needs and our proposed solutions um, and benefits come out clearly? Like did, when we rushed through this or not necessarily rushed through it, but went through it quickly at a faster pace, right? Did we really talk to and speak to the proposal and answer the needs appropriately, right? Do we, does it read as a whole? Is it unified, right? Or does it look like you just cut and paste a bunch of pieces together and do that? So like a lot of that can be intimidating when you look at it as a whole, but when you answer questions like that, like once you read it through, does it make sense? You kind of calm a little bit before hitting the submit button. Okay, great. And Ben, your perspective? Yes, uh, I, I have similar uh, experience as both of them in terms of the sheer size of the document. Most of the time would be the things that probably throws a lot of us out there. But with time, you know, and uh, being able to look at the document and go through them is the process. But the other thing is also that, like Margaret said, uh, the government is big. And sometimes when you start out, you don't know who to talk to. You don't know the proper channels eh, to have information. And that is usually the biggest and the most confusing time when you start a business initially. You don't have the contacts, you don't have the networks. So you don't really know who might provide the information that you need quickly enough for you to be able to use it and do what you need to do. So, and, and I find it that uh, one of my resources was that I, if you can go to another company of similar nature, I think that is a very, very good, you know, we have friends that are in the same industry with you. I think that's one of the ways to solve that problem, go to them. Another thing I use in my own situation was, I'm going after a bid and I think I'm interested in that bid, then I would uh, write, and get previous, you know, previous submitter on that bid mm -hmm, if it's available. Uh -huh. Because uh, I didn't know that in Florida we are Sunshine State. So if you ask for the information, they will give to you. They may, you know, stonewall you for some time, but eventually they will give it to you. So that's a very good way because when you now take the uh, uh, request for proposal or the bid package and compare to the response that you have. I normally ask for three, the best three, you know, uh -huh, that was selected. So we, if you get that, then you can now see and, and you can answer some of the questions that were, you know, intimidating or uh, where do I get this? You know, because some of the information, when you just read them for the first time, where do I get this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do I get this from? Where is that from? But they could be on the government website but sometimes they are not provided, but all the other people that have done business before, they will know that these forms are uh, commonly find, found on the business uh, government site and they can go there. So I take another bit that was done, if it's available and use that as a go by and read it with the information I have from the current bit. And that most of the time would solve some of the confusion and the intimidation that we had at the beginning. Thank you. And uh, in today's lingo, a public records request yes. is a major key. <laughs> um, you can ask government agencies, you can submit a public records request. Like Ben mentioned, we are in the sunshine state. Um, so it's an open record state. And you can submit a public records request. That's the common terminology amongst government agencies. You submit that. Um, like he mentioned, you may want to ask for the top three proposals, you know, for a previous award. And um, you can definitely use that to help craft your own response or even better understand uh, what is, you know, what the org organizations are looking for in, um, in their own bid documents. What they're asking, you can get some of the answers from those uh, previously submitted proposals. And like Ronald and Margaret mentioned, utilize your resources. Um, I think somebody, I saw something flash really quick. Somebody may have put information about PTAC in the chat. But again, the chamber offers technical assistance. They can help you. They can connect you to other organizations as well. So you're not alone in this process. And I think this is really important um, um, discussion that our panelists are sharing today. 
Okay, our next question is what are the components that small and minority businesses should pay closest attention to when reviewing a government bid document? Ronald, I'll start with you on this one. Okay, okay. I would say one of the things we first look at um, is, and we actually do like a control find really quick for the minority and to see how they're taking that in and, and it's being involved inside their evaluation criteria. It's very important to understand whether or not you're getting extra points in a singular section overall, or even if it's a price reduction. We've seen with some of our partners where they have if you have those certification, because we have one of their certifications where what we're bidding on, um, even if we are matching the price as someone else, we get a 5% price reduction. And so even though you're bidding at the same or ours could be a little higher, if it came down to the same, it's evaluated a 5% reduction. So some of those things that you're looking at when they're evaluating, you want to be clear and not being intimidated to Benjamin's point to and knowing who to reach out to when it's not present in the document. And you're saying you're looking at a bit and saying, okay, hey, have you guys considered uh, putting something like that in uh, for the evaluation criteria? Awesome, thank you, Margaret. What are your thoughts? What what should small and minority businesses pay closest attention to when they're looking at bid documents? Okay, so the first thing that I would say is, if government contracting is something that you are interested in. You need to pick an entity and you need to visit the sites and the places that they advertise often um, because due dates are crucial. And if you're finding the bid three days before it's due, it's of no use to you. So you have to visit those sites often so that you stay abreast to what is coming out. And then the second piece is read, read, read. Uh, getting into government contracting is not the time to read the first page and the last page. You have to read the in-between because you're going to miss something. And then the third thing that I would say is respond to what you're being asked. This is not the time to give the whole kitchen sink uh, because your bid, your actual bid will be lost in the fluff. So respond to what you're being asked. Thank you, Margaret. And Ben, what should small and minority businesses pay the closest attention to? Again, like, like Margaret said, read the whole document from cover to cover. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because very simple things can disqualify your bid or your proposal. Very simple things. Mm -hmm. Not including a number that is supposed to go somewhere, maybe that it can disqualify you. I've been disqualified a few times. So pay attention, pay attention to every detail and make sure you provide the exact information that is being requested. If I said in some document, they will say you have 10 pages to state your facts. Keep to that 10 pages. The font even in proposal would be given the font would be given in some proposal. So make sure that you go by that all the time. Make sure that provide all the information that is needed. Don't skip anything because that thing can be a disqualifiable key. Yeah? Some may not be disqualified. They may be able to call you back and say, you forgot to provide this information. Can you provide it now after the fact? But there are some that you cannot do that. So you have to pay attention and you have to go the extra mile. Another thing that um, I think we can discuss that later is if you're interested in an area, if you know that area very well and you know that a proposal will come out sometime, find out who is in charge so that you can have some upfront information, mm, some insight into the project, who is doing the project at this time, okay? Uh -huh. So when the pro by the time the project comes out, like Margaret said, it's too late most of the time eh, to find any other thing to be able to say, oh, maybe I should do, or maybe I should not do. Their decision should be made before the advertisement, not after the advertisement. Thank you. I think um, there's, there's an underlying theme in all of these responses, which is don't place your, yourself in a position to 
Um, if you, Margaret mentioned, if you find out three days before it's due, is that really something that you should pursue? You know, is that going to give you the time that you need to review the documentation, understand the requirements, and prepare a winning bid? Um, so definitely, like she said, check the websites often. Try to keep uh, yourself updated. A lot of these agencies, including Jack's weekly newsletter, what we try to advertise opportunities um, on a weekly basis so that the vendors are aware of what's out, what's coming out. Uh, but even we sometimes don't have, you know, if, if we send it out on a Tuesday and something came out on a Wednesday, you won't find out until the following week. Um, so don't depend on what we're sharing, you know, uh, subscribe yourselves to these sites and sign up for automatic notifications so you can be aware as soon as they come out. Ronald mentioned um, identifying the, the socioeconomic programs so if there's a minority program that applies to that solicitation. Um, and, and then, you know, he really shared, keep yourself ahead of the game, you know, try to find out, you know, who's in charge and see if you can get some of that information up front that can help you submit. Um, understand the bid, and then submit a winning bid and through the process. Um, so one of the benefits, we keep talking about these certifications and socioeconomic programs. Uh, one of the benefits of SBE certification, particularly with Miami-Dade County and Jackson, is that you get the opportunity as a certified business to review the scope of a solicitation or a bid prior to it going out to um, the entire vendor community. So I want Ben to share a little bit about how he engaged that process, um, you know, reviewing the document in advance, you know, how he used the process to identify some opportunities in the document and then what that meant for his business. Ben? Yes. Uh, like you said, yes, it's very, very important. It's key. I think when you get certified, what you, what you do is that uh, you allow yourself your, and your company to be put into the system. Thereby, um, in my immediate county in particular, but I, it's, it's uh, similar in the county and even at the federal level. The moment you registered with them, the, uh, like uh, it, it, in the case of Jackson as a vendor, but if you go further and you certify as a small business in my immediate county, what happens is that they will now send you information about all the areas of work that you actually showed that your company are capable of doing. Say for instance, you are in a cleaning business, if the cleaning contract is going to come out, eh, what DB, uh, DBD does is that they will now send out you know, verifications, mm -hmm. maybe about two months, three months ahead of time, uh, to find out how many small business are qualified to be able to either participate as a sub or to become the prime. Mm -hmm. And that now gives you a little bit uh, of time, maybe two months, maybe three months, depending on sometimes. Mm -hmm. It can be less than that, depending on uh, the track record that they want to maintain on the project. So that gives you time. They will send out that notice to you if you are certified and you've shown uh, that area as your area of specialty. They will send you that information. And that helps you now to say, okay, mm, I have that, I have that, I have that. You know, you know, uh -huh. this is something I will want to pursue. So it does give you an advanced, you know, uh, opportunity to know. And you also will indicate to the county that yes, you are capable of being the prime on this project. And that can, if there are maybe three, four, five people again that can do that and show uh, the experience, then the county can set it aside for small business. But apart from that, I think the key to it is really that you are able to uh, you know, give yourself some comfort zone and then look at the project and know that if or not you can take this project and go on with it. So I have used that uh, in the county. I've used it in the federal level as well. Uh, we went after a contract with HOT and what we normally do at a hot level is that there will be a plan list every year for the contracts that will be coming out from HOT. Mm -hmm. If you go to their website, hot.com, hot.gov, hot eh, and you're familiar with the site, you can actually see that. Mm -hmm. And it will give you the entire year program. And they will also tell you about what time the contracts will be advertised. 
They will show the contracting manager's name on it. Eh? So this avenue works even to the federal level. Mm? At the state levels, DOT is also similar. They would uh, show the program for the year, the entire program that they, they would conduct on the uh, yearly, uh, yearly basis, usually at the district level, the district four, District 5, which is um, Broward County, District 6 is Miami-Dade County. And you can go to that website and you can also see those things and, and it would help you. Particularly when you are certified with them as a small business, they will send you the information for a meeting that will be held in terms of those, uh, I, I mean, discussing those contracts that will be upcoming in the year. It doesn't mean that all of them would happen, but it does give you time to pick and choose. And also, if the contract is big, it gives you time to tell the bigger contractor and say, can we partner with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we be a sub to you on this? Can you be a sub to us on that? And this is a time for planning. It gives you good timing. So we've used that for DOT as well. Uh, in Broward County, we've done the same thing. We're doing some work with Broward County now as a sub, like I mentioned before. Yes, uh -huh. you have to be able to uh, register with the Broward County as a CBE, SBE, or DBE, and you have the same uh, things. They will send you information on a regular basis. Uh, Broward County also have a a newsletter that they publish, which is very, very informative. And they will send you every week. Try and find time to read this because as a small business, time is of the essence, of course. You don't have that much time. You have to make things happen. You have to meet the payroll. Uh, you have to you know, uh, do the accounting and all these other things and make sure that things are happening. So, But you have to find time to do that, to make sure that you get certified and use that to work for your benefit. Mm, I would say start at the county level and work your way up. Don't try to do all of them at the same time, but try it from the county level and work your way up. And at the county, and I understand now the county can actually certify you as a DBE as well. So you can work up and there's also reciprocity. That is if I am certified in Miami-Dade County, sometimes when you go to Broward County, it's not as difficult to do it anymore. Or if you are certified with Broward County, then uh, you just submit your name to Broward County School Board and they will certify you. Uh, Broward Health, uh, you know, they would also certify you. So those are the things that you need to work out to. So I, I think I can take some questions when it comes to that and I will be able to uh, give more of the experience that we've had using that method to, you know, go Thank you, Ben. Thank, Thank you. you. He really sold certification. And that, that is really a hidden jewel um, that a lot of companies are not even aware of these certification programs. And these programs can really position your business uh, well when trying to work with government agencies. So I want to ask quickly, Margaret and Ronald, um, have you been able to uh, leverage any certification in the same ways? I'll, I'll say first and foremost, you took the time to get certified. Your certificate is not a wall plaque. That's the first thing that I'm gonna say. When you get it, yes, I put mine on my wall, but it's not for decoration, it's for work. So, you know, you have to market that certification. Uh, you know, Ben talked about uh, partnering. It is important. When you don't, you got certified, you're small. There's a lot of projects out there that you don't have capacity for. Find somebody in your industry and don't be shy. I go in there, I tell them, I said, hey, I'm an electrical contractor and I'm a woman. And by the way, I got all the ease that there is to have. How can I add value to your team? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to market it. Um, it, it it's a very, very valuable um, piece of pay, uh, paper. So don't just take it and put it in a drawer. I'm on the Broward County Convention and I have a significant piece of that pie because of that certification. I've done stuff in the school board because of that certification. Haven't hit Jackson yet, but I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> but I have stuff in Miami Day because of that. I have stuff on X dot because of DBE, 
all of those things, but I didn't get it and hide it. I got it and I worked it. So that would be my big thing that I would drop, work what you have. Thank you, Margaret. And if I can really quickly, I wanna tie that back to our overall topic, which is understanding a government bid. Um, it's really important when you're talking about certification because maybe the prime, maybe you read that document and you said, I can't do this. I would not be able to satisfy this contract on my own, uh, but read it from the perspective of, is this an opportunity for me to partner with a larger company, for me to be a subcontractor on a contract? Some of these socioeconomic programs actually have subcontracting requirements. So if you see a bid um, and it's in your general industry, but maybe you see the title and you say, that's not something I'm ready for, still read the document. Uh, there may be opportunities for subcontracting that you can identify. Ronald? Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with that. And even if you don't, when you're reading the contract, I would definitely recommend if you're not there yet and you want to be there and that's where you want to be, making a plan to actually get there uh, and understanding that is a good way just to also be read, reading all the bids that kind of come through. And then for us, absolutely, the certifications cannot lie. They are helpful uh, using the DBE. You guys have to remember to um, speaking to the small businesses, right? That, that that DBE certification, there's utilization rates out there for these different certifications out there. So these people are looking for you. So don't feel like, okay, I can't go reach out. I can't go talk to nobody. They don't want to talk to me. It's a waste of time. Like that is not the case. I, you know, I, I really can't emphasize that enough. Um, when I had my, the DBE and it's like, okay, I'm reaching out to you. They're happy to talk to me. Happy that they're excited. I got a call the other week um from a department that sent out an advertisement that was soliciting uh sources and when i called him and i was like well i need you to explain a little bit more of the scope of work and thing he was like ron you're ron johnson oh i just found you on the registry and i sent you an email he was excited that the system that they were using was actually working and that he was talking to a small business that actually could help him and so when it really comes to the under certification and they set up seminars, um, even on the federal side, like they set up vendor outreach sessions to not just meet with the departments, but they also meet with uh, primes, giving you an opportunity to meet with primes and understanding what they want as well. By understanding everybody in a part of the process and trying to meet those, these, like that's what's going to really do it for you. And you can't, you can't give up. Um, one of the things that someone told me on the uh, last chamber call or one of the last meetings was you got to endure got to endure you understand it's a long process just endure and I, I think that's a really really important uh point there are some vendors that i met with saw engaged with for two or three years before they got a contract but it took that time to understand margaret, even that that may have been part of your experience i saw margaret everywhere um in all kind of outreach events and networking opportunities because i feel that it sometimes takes a while to understand your customers, to understand government, to get familiar with the terminology. You know, this is not an overnight thing. You're not going to start a business today and get into a government contract tomorrow. It's not going to happen that way. Um, good things take time. And if you invest your time and your effort, it will pay off eventually, you know, on your ideal time timeline of six, three to six months, you know, it's not going to be a microwave process. Uh, but with the right time and the right investment of effort, it will pay off. Um, and we, you know, we have several vendors right here in front of you sharing their experiences and you see that they've been able to win these contracts. So stick with the process. Um, the last question uh, is what advice would you offer to small and minority businesses who may be avoiding government bidding due to the idea that government bids are too hard to respond to? So we've done a lot of discussion about that today, but um, some some last words of advice. I'm gonna start with Michelle on this one. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. I think I, what everyone has said here has been great information. And just again, don't be intimidated and really take that time to invest upfront um, in your business by really going and reviewing that document from start to finish. Take the time because although you may not be the successful and awarded bitter at the end of the day, you have taken the time to, to go ahead and know how to, to respond as a responsive um, bidder. And you know, sometimes 
just, just putting in a response gets your foot in the door, right? You may not always be successful, but that's step one. And then once you've done one bid, you'll become more familiar and you'll be able to, hey, the next one, it's not as hard as I thought it was. And then the next one, it's not that hard. Just keep on trying. Don't give up and don't let it intimidate you because it, yeah, it may take a year. It may take two. It may take 10, hopefully not. Right. But just invest in yourself, invest in your business. And if you really want to do government contracting, you really have to take the time to review all of the needs uh, of that document and really just get to know, get to know the organization, do that research up front, look to see what their mission is, what their goal is, what their upcoming projects are. Um, familiarize yourself, go to networking events. Um, one thing that we do do as part of our solicitations, um, especially if you are, uh, you know, a small business and there's a big solicitation in, you, in which you know that you cannot um, provide the full scope of work. As part of an, our amendments, we always like to publish all of those vendors that attended that pre-bid conference with their contact information. Utilize that information. Look to see what the, the, what the vendors that are interested also, like yourselves, and, and network with them. Reach out to them. Look to see if, if you can provide the whole scope, how can you partner with a larger business to get your foot in the door? You know, I think that's, that's also very key. But just... Like, like what everyone here has said, I know it, it can be cumbersome, it can be intimidating, but don't let it intimidate you. Read, read, read and invest, invest in the document. Thank you, Michelle. Thank ben, you. any last advice? Yes, uh, I would say again, you know, look at it as an investment. Yes, you may think that it's difficult, it's intimidating or initially confusing. But I think look at it as an investment. So you have to invest a little bit of your time. Say, I would say like maybe 10% of your time. Mm -hmm. uh, build it gradually, like you said. Attend, particularly if you identify a government agency, say like Jackson, that you want to get something from, that right? you think that you can provide them with a you know quality service or quality product or you know construction or something. Uh, be persistent. Go back. Mm -hmm. and keep, you know, every time invest in it. Because when we had the financial crisis in 2000 and, uh, 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 2008, you know, started, I think, 2007, 2008, 2009, yeah. Uh, half of my business collapsed because it was on the private sector. So it's good for you to have diversification in terms of, the way you do business as well. Because if something is pulled off your, under the rock for you, then you may not have a company again. So it's good to have different sectors. Margaret probably can relate to that. You know, you have to have different sectors. So the government sector is very reliable. And also, most of the time you get paid. It may take a long time. It may take a long time, but if you did the work, you will get Paid. And they will work with you and make sure you get paid. In the private sector, the person can go out of business and nothing happens and you lost everything in that you invested. So I would encourage everybody, yes, initially it would be confusing or intimidating, but make that investment. Hmm? Go to the pre bid eh? Don't really hope to get that first contract that you bid or submit. Don't, I think that is asking for too much. Yeah. Uh, I personally think about, I normally, if I do 20%, uh, you know, of what I submit, I think it's good, okay? 20% is good. So you have to look at it that way. It's a game of numbers. If you don't submit, you're not going to get anything at all. Mm -hmm. And it's an investment. And the government is one of the most reliable clients that you can have. And Very I think true. you should do it for that uh, if you're a small business. So consider, yeah, yeah. and they actually buy and bid of almost everything. So your specialty would be somewhere in there, you know, if you look at it and then look at it properly and invest the time to learn and know. And don't be shy and don't be intimidated. Go to a partner, go to a bigger company and say, I want to get in here 
uh, how can I partner with you? How can I help you uh, become a better contractor? Like Margaret said, you know, go to them uh, and talk to everybody. If you talk to a hundred people, I bet you two or three will say yes. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Ben. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And Margaret, really quickly. Sure. My, my last words would be, don't be scared to ask for help. Uh, once you get something that you don't understand, start seeking out help right away. Uh, we talked about all the different entities that you can go to for help, um, but also to attend pre-bid meetings and don't rely on someone to ask your question. Ask it yourself because you can sit through an entire pre-bid meeting and walk out of there and your question don't get answered. There's no dumb question. If you don't know, you don't know. That would be my last advice. That's life advice. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Ronald? Um, I would put it simply and say, you have zero chance of winning if you don't play. So uh, my advice is to take a breath, right? Take a step and take it one step at a time. It's a complex process, but it's not impossible. Right. You, and most people include, you know, you're the business owner, you know, your business better than anyone. So, right. You know what you can do. Um, have a dedicated team, have a structured approach and have a templates library. Those are things that are actually really important as well, because uh, it helps eliminate that feeling of it feeling too hard to do. Um, and it's good to remember, right, that the procurement specialist and the buyer spend a reasonable amount of time putting these bids together. So when you're putting your response together, it should reflect those efforts uh, and, and maybe even exceed them. So that's one of the biggest pieces. And also to uh, is joining places like the, Com the Chamber of Commerce right? These are where you're going to meet your people, right? Matt, me and, me and Matt have had side conversations where I've asked them for like business advice or how to go about or approach something as well. So the network is already here. So you guys who have joined this call today have already on the first step of moving forward, right? Because you are showing the thirst for knowledge and that intellectual curiosity to kind of be better and do better. So I, I, I'm happy you guys are here and I'm happy to be here. So thank you. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you, Margaret, Ben, Michelle. Thank you all so much. It's been such a pleasure discussing this extremely important topic with all of you. Thank you for your time and so freely sharing your expertise. Uh, we appreciate it from Jackson, the Chamber, and our attendees today. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Emma, for being such an amazing host and moderator of this amazing discussion and for Jackson Health and our partners. Michelle, thank you for bringing your expertise. I know as senior uh, procurement directors, take your time to come on this presentation and really share that information and be available for these questions. Uh, we really appreciate you doing that and we welcome you to continue to do so. Um, and for our business owners, our members of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Thank y'all for showing up and letting people know and spreading that wisdom. We yeah, there is a round of applause for y'all. I like, guess just awesome. Y'all are what make this chamber great and continue to bring in more and more people to government contracting. So Margaret, Ron, uh, Benjamin, thank you for sharing that wisdom and understanding and being so upfront. Um, and I hope our business owners uh, understand a lot of this stuff people say uh, over and over, make sure you read everything, make sure you go, make sure you go to the pre-bid meeting, make sure you ask questions, uh, take the long-term uh, perspective on this, the first vacation, but it is so true. And only by doing it each and every time consistently can you get to the point where you can secure government contracts. This is not for everyone um, because there are challenges um, with uh, going through and getting government contracts um, and securing them and being in compliance and getting paid. Um, it is definitely challenges, um, but it can be a rewarding experience. And we here at the Miami-Dade Chamber are here to assist you in that process. So I want to take some moment just to go through a few resources and opportunities that we have as a chamber. Um, first and foremost is our Small Business Technical Assistance Program. Uh, we are here to provide you one-on-one -on -one technical assistance for your business. So make sure you go to I mean, www.mdcc.org um, slash technical assistance to sign up. You can schedule immediately, get these questions answered. One of the amazing things about us as a chamber, we're like a clearinghouse. 
we hear all the questions and information and the things that our businesses have, our partners have, the government have. So we have a lot of resources and opportunities um, for you if you just take advantage of them. And one thing that we uh, encourage you to come to with our small business meetup um, every Tuesday and Friday. Actually, we're going on to, since we're opening back up, we'll be doing it every Tuesday at four o'clock. You can go to our website, www.mdacc.org slash events um, and join in our small business meetup. There's a lot of business owners that come in, share the latest resources. We talk about various topics and ideas, and it's an amazing opportunity for you as a business owner to network and meet from the safety of your home or you're busy, just take some time just to listen on in. It's a good conversation. Uh, for those members, we are here having our backyard barbecue for our members. It's our first in-person meetup at the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's our membership drive. So if you're interested in coming in, it'll be at the home of our membership uh, chair. So please feel free to come and stop in and stop by. And next week, we have our general membership meeting with a small business uh, we'll focus on small business post pandemic where our mayor, uh, Danielle Levine Cava, will be in attendance um, to give a keynote about small businesses moving in, in a post pandemic world. And we have a, plenty, a lot of events, so just make sure you check out our events page. One that's been a really good um, resource um, has our Women's Business Council. Uh, they have been taking the time to share knowledge between generations about how to become a millionaire, basically talking about how they made their first million and sharing their money mistakes and money moves they wish they made. So make sure you come in and, and join the chamber. And as you know, we are in a pandemic and we wanna make sure that people understand about the importance of vaccine. So I wanna take a moment for the Florida Department of Health and also Vax305 to share a message about making sure you get the latest resources when it comes hey, to vaccines. You know, the COVID-19 vaccine is a safe, proven way to protect your family and you against the coronavirus. You may have questions about the new vaccines and want more information to make the best decision. That's why the Florida Division of Emergency Management partnered with local community leaders and created Vax305.com. Go to Vax305.com and get your questions answered and find out exactly where you can get vaccinated. Take care of your people and you. Get information to make the right decision. It's about more than you. Log on to VAX305.com. And with that, I want to thank all of those that have been here today, our partners, Jackson Health, and our business owners. Thank you very much for our attendees. Spread the word. This webinar will be posted on our webinar page um, at www.m-dcc.org. We welcome you to join the chamber to be a part of this amazing network of business owners, basically trying to do business with each other and grow our capacity so we can provide for our families and a better community. Thank you very much for being here today. We look forward to seeing you again. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Amber, Michelle, Ron, Benjamin, and Market. Talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. And email us smallbusiness at jhsmiami.org. It's in the chat if you have questions that didn't get answered today. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.